Welcome back to Week in Review. I'm Damian David with Healthcare Triangle, and this is week number 18. Week of August 10th, 2020. I'm recording actually on Tuesday, the 11th. Spent yesterday with my kids. So here we go. Let's get into it. We're going to do some headlines, followed by a conversation. I caught up with my colleague, Irene Monarolo. Uh, talked a little bit about some of the projects she's working on and, and trying to get ahead of the project from a financial perspective. Okay, so some tips and pointers to make sure that your transition is smooth if you're going to Meditech Expanse or Mass. Uh, from the perspective and point of view of getting everything, your ducks in a row, if you will, for your financials. And then I'll go ahead and leave you with another song that I did and some some uh, visions. All right, so here, let's get into it. Again, I mentioned this is the week of August 10th, 2020. Some interesting headlines happened this week. Let's get started. New Zealand, after having 102 days without COVID-19, uh, and it's amazing streak today with four new cases emerging, okay? So they go into what they call Auckland lockdown once again, and their goal is to knock those four new cases down to zero and, and get rid of COVID-19 once again in New Zealand. So good luck to them. Today, we found out Big Ten and Pac-12 are going to be canceling their 2020 football season this fall. Uh, they're looking maybe to reassess whether or not they should have that season in the spring. Um, so we might hear some more news. Maybe 2020, 2021 is in a total loss for the school year. Uh, there might be football in spring. Okay, more to come. Florida has broken another record in the world of coronavirus COVID-19 this week. As of Monday, August 10th, Florida has reported 276 COVID-19 related fatalities just in that day. So unfortunately, the, the record that they broke is breaking the daily death toll record. Okay, hopefully that's the last time that they do that. On Monday, President Trump was interrupted and rushed out of the White House briefing room following a shooting incident out in front of the White House. Uh, it was an altercation. I guess Secret Service agents had actually shot somebody who um, faked pulling a gun on them. Not a lot of details have been released at this point. Uh, we'll hear more, I'm sure. More on the political front. Today, Tuesday, August 11th, Biden just announced that he selected Kamala Harris uh, to be his running mate for the 2020 elections. Okay, So that's some interesting news there, and it's, it's fresh off the press, if you will. Just announced it moments ago. Georgia, Governor Brian Kemp reported that the reopening of the state schools was going well. And then a few days later, Cherokee County School District, which is just about a half hour, 30, 40 minutes outside of the Atlanta area, uh, had to actually quarantine and close down to quarantine 900 students and staff all because of possible exposure to COVID-19 coronavirus. Uh, as of now, so far, 59 students and staff have actually tested positive. So something tells me we'll be talking about this again in the next week in review. The latest therapy in treating patients with COVID-19 who have exhausted all of the therapies showed that also showed some success is inducing hypothermia. So there were four patients, again, they had exhausted all the treatments for treating COVID-19, uh, not effective, they were still on ventilators, so far, two of them, after being cooled to 94.1 degrees Fahrenheit for 48 hours, two of them have actually come off ventilator successfully. So this might be an actual successful therapy that might be utilized more and more for those who have exhausted all other means. Obviously, inducing hypothermia introduces new and different challenges. Uh, potential side effects might happen because of that. So. Uh, I'm not going out and saying induce hypothermia if you think you have COVID-19, not, not at all. Let's see, find out a little bit more about that and see what happens to the other two patients where this was attempted and tried as a, as a therapy. All right, the, the headlines for this week. Looking forward to following up next week on some of these stories as we find out more. Let's get to the stats this week, okay? So world confirmed cases have reached 20 0.08 million cases throughout the world as compared to we were only up to about 18 million last week 12.2 million have recovered from COVID-19 around the world where last week we only had 10.7 million recoveries and death stats are up to 727,000 deaths for COVID related incidents and in, in, in cases last week we were at 689,000 deaths around the world 
narrowing into the U.S. scope, so just in the U.S., 5.11 million cases of coronavirus COVID-19. Last week, we were just totaling 4.77 million. Uh, of that, 2.54 million have recovered, whereas last week we only had 2.32 million recoveries. Death toll is up to 164,000 deaths from COVID-19 as compared to where we were last week at a total of 157,000 deaths in the U.S. Well, those are our statistics for the week. Those are our headlines for the week. I'm going to now transition into a video call that I had earlier with my colleague Irene Monarolo. She's one of our principal consultants, an excellent resource with, with a lot of profound experience in revenue cycle in general financials, especially in the Meditech world. A few weeks ago, she did a, a webinar for Muse that's available online. I'm going to put the link in the description. So let's go to that conversation now. Irene, it's good to see you. You're calling from Fresno, California area, is that right? Yes, good morning, or is it still morning? It's still morning here. <laughs> well, good, good. How you been? Good, how are you? I can't complain. Things are pretty good. The sun's out, and uh, even though we had some um, crazy storms go through the past couple of days, we've been safe here in Nebraska. So, um, yeah, pretty good, other than the coronavirus COVID-19 thing. You know how it is. Understandable. Well, hey, you know, I was uh, checking things out. I, I noticed that you did a webinar for Muse a couple weeks ago, and they it's available. It, it, you can go uh, on demand and take a look at it for anybody watching that wants to see it. Uh, I'll leave the link in, to it in the uh, description to this Week in Review. Um, but it's, it's around revenue cycle. It's around getting into projects. Um, I think you were particularly focused on, if I if I'm correct, an expanse project that you were you were part of uh, most recently. Obviously, you've been part of other expanse projects. Just kind of things to think about ahead of time, um, and then also what you need to think about as you're getting through the implementation process. It's about 23, 24 minutes. I think it's every it's worth everybody's time if they wanted to get a crash course prior to or building up to an expanse project. Um, can you kind of take me through what, what you did in that 23 minutes, just kind of a 50,000 foot level here? I wanted to speak about um, some of the items that we've been able to learn from our expanse projects um, and, and really try to reiterate to clients that, um, you know, bringing in the RevCycle team early on into a project is crucial. You can't build the rest of the system without having some of those main finance components implemented, decided upon, such as your your chart of accounts, you know, the GL, having all that stuff. I know that that's not on the top of most people's priority list, but for finance, we're like, we have to be part of that discussion. So, um, so I wanted to kind of touch base on that, um, making sure that clients understand that we at the very beginning are trying to make sure that they are gathering as much as um, revenue as they can from the very beginning when their system goes live. So we're thinking ahead, we're thinking big picture, um, charge capture, um, you know, trying to minimize any optimization efforts and to take an advantage of those first, uh, that first phase and getting us in and um, developing uh, a cohesive system. So I kind of threw, I kind of took the presentation through the obstacles of, you know, financial, the financial desktop, which is something new and expands. The daily system management, all of those components are different from a magic client, Metatech 608, uh, you know, system. So you get so much more with this new expanse system that Meditech has put out. And for the revenue cycle part, it was like an aha, thank God that they finally listened to us. I've been able to be part of some of those beta sites where we said, no, Meditech, we need to go back to the board and think about, you know, A, B, and C. How does it affect contracts? How does it affect, affect the front desk? You know, all those small components that need to come together to make a cohesive system. So that's really what I wanted to reiterate um, in, in the presentation that I that I have there. That's wonderful. The uh, So, you know, the, one of the projects you're on now, without naming names or anything like that, the, uh, you know, you speak of expanse projects, but you know, we've rolled our sleeves up and we're helping out with a, a more recent mass project mm -hmm. as well, where, you know, 
ideally, you know, you could just kind of turn that on and, and roll it out. But it, this is a smaller organization where they just needed a little bit more resources to help them on their side. So we, we're in, we're involved in there. Um, same things apply for, for the mass. Is that something people should be thinking about well in advance of, of getting their, their system or access to their, their mass pl platform? Absolutely. This particular site is going from a magic um, magic conversion over to a mass conversion. So you're talking definitely apples and oranges. I mean, it's, it's completely different. Definitely something where they should have involved revenue cycle at the very beginning to lay out those fundamental components of the system. And then as well on the part that I'm assisting in, um, a lot of the reports that are being extracted from their legacy system don't compare to the, to the reports and the uploads that have to be done um, by Meditech and the new system in the mass uh, environment. So uh, being able to be part of that and allowing the systems to kind of speak to each other or formatting those reports in a manner that makes sense um, it has slowed things down a little bit. Um, so you know, just trying to catch catch up and understand what Meditech again have um, reviewed with the client, what they've been trained on, um, things like that. So, uh, you know, trying to work just hand in hand with Meditech uh, so that they know what that what this particular client needs. Um, being a small organization, it does not always apply as it would a big company. So, sure. um, it has a. It's, it has had its challenges. Well, you know, I keep tabs of it. It sounds they're doing like they're doing great, and and they'll get there. So uh, appreciate the work that you've been doing there. Can you tell me a little bit about some very drastic changes that you've seen between how we approach things in pre-COVID, pre-coronavirus, and and how we're approaching it now? I think the biggest, um, I would say, challenge is that we're not on site. So we don't have that opportunity to evaluate and visually see their workflows. A lot of the times, one of the things that we like to do is go into the department, visually see what they're doing, what their workflow is um, documented. It's one thing when they tell you what it is, but it's another when you're actually watching them do it. Because you go, oh, you didn't tell me that you did that. Um, and so they're like, oh, you know, it's something that they do on a daily basis. So it, it's no big deal to them, but it is a big deal when you're building a system because you have to make sure that that system can do it, um, that there's no third party needed. So I think that's the biggest challenge as well as, um, you know, a lot of team members don't particularly feel comfortable turning on their cameras. Um, so you don't know what they're doing. You, you can hear them taking calls. You can hear them getting interrupted. Um, and it's and it really hurts the client not to be engaged uh, because then they go back and go, oh, I didn't know that I was supposed to do ABC, you know. So just grabbing that attention when you're in a room, uh, in a meeting, in a build session, it's it's definitely has its challenges with that as well. Well, yeah, fair enough. And and so you're constantly checking in and asking and making sure that they're absorbing the concepts that you're reviewing, right? right? Yeah, interesting. Well, hey, thanks a lot for, for taking the time to talk to me today. Um, again, I'm going to leave the link to the webinar there. Exciting in the next couple of weeks to a couple of months, uh, we're rolling out some different modules uh, of information to help people, little bite-sized chunks of information for those that are undergoing some projects or preparing for projects to get into Expanse or Mass. Um, obviously, you, I, I'm looking forward to, to being able to offer those. But uh, in the meantime, anybody that has any questions, please feel free to contact either Irene. I, I'm going to put her LinkedIn information into the description as well as mine. You're all, always welcome to, to reach out to me too. I appreciate when you do. It's been a fun 18 weeks so far of the back and forth with that. So keep it up. Um, I, I wanted to put you on the hot seat. That's what I do to almost everybody I talk to. So. If you're all right with it, I, I got a couple questions for you. You go Absolutely. for it? Absolutely. All for right. It. <laughs> Here we go. So, Irene, I want to know, and I think a lot of the viewers want to know too, what's your favorite or your drink of choice, I should say, during work and then post work during COVID 19 coronavirus? 
Um, yeah, so my, my drink of choice during work is usually you'll find me drinking uh, diet citrus green tea. Um, <laughs> so I go through jugs of that. Um, it's refreshing and, you know, a little caffeine doesn't hurt. Um, I would say my drink of choice after hours would be um, probably a Moscato. Nice. So yeah, the uh, mine during the day. I'm also a caffeineaholic, so the local local coffee house. This is this is iced coffee, and I don't know. I'm addicted to it. I have to get one of those. <laughs> and then uh, I think after drink or after work last week, I was on the hard seltzer kick. Um, still am. The catches. I've had a couple micheladas in the past week, and I think that's kind of bumping up on my list there. So <laughs> there you go. My, my my new favorite after work weekend drink, if you will. So, well, thanks for sharing that. Thanks for taking the time with me today. It's good to see you. Glad to see you. you're doing well and that you're safe. Um, please continue to be safe, and and we'll hopefully see you soon once this thing all blows over. Look forward to talking to you later. All right. Thanks, Irene. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So again, special thanks to Irene Monarolo uh, for joining me and in, in discussing what she's learned and what she can help out with as far as giving you some tips and pointers and preparing uh, for your transition to expanse and mass from a general financials and revenue cycle perspective. I'm going to leave you with some music and some visions. Thank you very much for all the work and effort that you're doing for your communities. I hope that you continue to be safe and you have your diligence. Uh, as we get through this pandemic and i hope to see you next week for week 19. take care have a good week I see trees of green, red roses too. I watch them bloom, born in you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see the skies of blue, clouds of white. Bright blessed day and that dark sacred night And I think to myself What a wonderful world The colors of the rainbow So pretty in the sky Also on the faces of the people passing by I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. Oh, no. well, I hear babies cry. I watch them grow. They learn so much more than I'll ever know. Myself. What a wonderful world And I think to myself What a wonderful world <laughs>